started. Welcome to Great Events. Our speaker today, Dennis Dawson, has completed the traditional Toastmasters education program two times and earned two distinguished Toastmasters awards. He's a past district governor of District 57. He's also a champion for humorous speech, tall tales, evaluations. He teaches drawing at our local elementary schools and volunteers as Santa Claus at Santa Clara San Jose Christmas in the Park. Please help me welcome the two-time distinguished Toastmaster, Dennis Dawson. It's all you, sir. I always love those introductions because I'm thinking, wow, that guy sounds cool, but it's only me. So I know that, no, nah, no, nah, not so much. So let me share my screen here. And I will share that one. There we are. Oops, come on now. Everybody's got to be difficult. All right. Welcome, everyone. I have to say I come to this topic humbly. I know that there are many talented speakers in the room and seasoned evaluators. Still, I do have a confession. I am an advanced speaker. I've won district contests and served as a district officer. I've given over 100 evaluation speeches, evaluated speeches based on lessons in the Toastmasters materials. And I've given well over 100 evaluations as well, come to think of it. I give workshops like the one I'm doing now. So if I'm such toast with awesome sauce, why am I still in Toastmasters? Anybody got a guess? because you love it i do love it and that would be a reason to stay just just for the social aspects of it but there are two other reasons i stay in toastmasters sharon i was going to say there's always room to grow yes like everyone else i'm here <clears throat> to continually improve my public speaking and leadership skills and you never get to the point where you're done improving your public speaking and leadership skills if you listen to Malcolm Gladwell, he's going to tell you by his chart of mastery that we tend to build skills really quickly when we start out. But after that, the progress is more gradual. It's still important, but it's just not as dramatic and it's not going to come as quickly. So I hope you'll understand how frustrating it can be for an advanced speaker to hear somebody say, oh, oh my, you're just so good. I don't know what to say. Because if that is true, then I'm not going to be able to grow in Toastmasters. So we want to evaluate people with empathy. And that means evaluate in such a way that we are focused on our, the speaker and we are focused on helping them to improve their public speaking and leadership skills. I rely on my fellow Toastmasters to help me to improve. And as a distinguished Toastmaster, I have to distinguish myself every time I give an evaluation. So it is definitely a two-way street. So tonight I'm going to spend about 25 minutes talking about giving feedback that's focused on the speaker. I'll talk about how to go a level deeper to give more nuanced feedback. And I'll talk about the importance of being honest, but giving empathetic feedback. We'll have two speakers, I'm sorry, one speaker tonight with three evaluators, and then I'll evaluate the evaluators. A lot of fun. Now, evaluators, Solarzar, Anita, and Sharon, when you do your evaluation, I'm going to ask that you try out my techniques that I'm suggesting here. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. Try out the ones I'm suggesting here and see if they aren't a chance for you to incorporate some new learnings into the way you give your evaluations. Okay. So let's begin by empathizing with the speaker. You see, evaluations are the heart of Toastmasters. They're the core of the education program, but they're also how we share, show that we care for one another. 
If you're worried about how you're going to evaluate a speaker, it's because you're too focused on yourself. You're worried about being too critical. You're worried about sounding dumb. You're worried about what others will think of you or what the speaker will think of you. You can easily move past these feelings if you remember that the evaluation isn't about you. There are no experts in Toastmasters, no teachers. There are only peers who give their honest opinions. So if you focus on the speaker's growth, think about how you want to help the speaker, then you're going to move past thinking about yourself. You see, in Toastmasters, we rise to every occasion. That's an acronym spun around from our uh, Toastmasters tenets, which are respect, integrity, service, and excellence. And you can apply respect, integrity, service, and excellence in every evaluation. First of all, you show respect. We respect the educational program. Yes, that means we respect pathways. We follow the rules and create an environment that allows everyone to achieve their communication and leadership goals, resulting in greater confidence and self-respect. But that respect is a two-way street. You have to respect yourself. Your observations matter. You can always tell any speaker what you saw, heard, and felt while they were speaking. That feedback is always useful and appreciated if you're honest and observant. You can also respect the speaker. The speakers prepared a speech and had the temerity to deliver it to your club. The speaker deserves to receive a thoughtful evaluation. And by the way, if the speaker obviously hasn't prepared well, they deserve an evaluation about that as well. In one of my home clubs, I was assigned as an evaluator to a longtime member. I asked what lesson he was using. He said, none. I saw in his right hand that infamous yellow sticky note with bullet points. He was going to give a four to six minute speech about what Toastmasters means to me. He'd done a speech like this before and the club said it was okay. He then gave a rambling, less than coherent, something like a table talk that actually lasted about three minutes. I did not hold back in his evaluation. I took him to task for stealing a valuable speaking slot from someone who could have used it to advance in the Pathways program. I took him to task for not preparing, and mostly I took him to task for his disrespect of the educational program, his fellow members, and the Toastmasters organization itself. The club was aghast. I continued. I apologized to him for the club letting him down, allowing him to be in the club for years without building his skills. I assured him that we all love him and we want him to succeed and promised that we, the club, would do better to help him reach his goals. Now, shocking as it was, it was a growth moment for the club. I was not kicked out of the club. In fact, I was uh, elected president. My friend didn't quit. He's now engaged in pathways and really showing improvement. And no member, by the way, has given a speech outside pathways curriculum since that time. I could have just let it go, but it was a question of integrity. Do I wanna be part of a club where members don't work the program? Well, no. If I don't like this chapter, I can literally go to 16,000 other clubs to choose from. And they're all meeting online right now, so it's easy to find a club that will match my schedule. So we need to act with integrity in all things. Be truthful and be honest. Be kind. Express your opinions with affection. But don't shy away from saying what needs to be said. Now, Toastmasters is an organization that teaches leadership skills, but not just any kind of leadership. We champion servant leadership. You're here to provide service to your fellow members. When I was district governor, it meant that I turned on the lights in the morning, then I picked up the trash and turned off the lights in the evening. Leadership isn't notoriety or glamor, it's working to help others have fun and achieve their goals. One important service we all provide one another is thoughtful feedback in the form of evaluations. 
Now we are what we do regularly, therefore excellence is a habit. We want all speeches to be excellent. We are not preparing to talk to 10 people at the back of a Denny's. We're here to prepare to give TED Talks. We're preparing to give keynote speeches at professional conferences. Give feedback as if you're helping the next world champion of public speaking, and one of these days you might be right. Never doubt that you're ready to evaluate any speaker. You have a right to express what you see, hear, and feel when a speaker is presenting. You can't be wrong when you're stating what you personally observed. You have a responsibility to give excellent feedback as an active member of your club, and you have a duty to deliver feedback that gives encouragement, helps the speaker grow, and is edifying for everyone present. Now, you know your task with giving helpful feedback. When you're evaluating an experienced speaker, you'll evaluate them based on some, the, I'm sorry, the same criteria as anyone else, but you'll have to take a more nuanced approach. Believe it or not, the best way to start with an advanced speaker is to ask yourself how they did with the basics. In Toastmasters, we first learned the mechanics of how to create an effective presentation. After that, we use those skills for particular results, to inspire, to persuade, or to entertain. The rules that we learn early on are meant to be broken as we progress and experiment with different formats and intentions. So ask yourself two questions. Did the speaker follow the basic rules? And number two, where they broke the rules, was it intentional and effective? Answer those questions, you have a ready-made evaluation, finding areas to praise and areas for improvement. Remember, there are no free speeches. Every speech has a pathways lesson. Experienced speakers are often less likely to pay attention to the requirements for a particular lesson. So read the criteria. Talk to the speaker about what they want you to focus on. Consider both the form and the things they want you to watch for as you write out your evaluation. That's going to give you plenty to talk about. Now, to my shame, when I first completed A Path and Pathways, I prepared this wonderful five to seven minute speech where I reflected on my journey. I had a fancy video Zoom background to go with it. The speech was well received. It was a, a great thing uh, until... In the same meeting, another speaker reflected on her path. She gave an eight to 10 minute speech per the lesson guidelines. I was voted best speaker of the day, they do that in my club, but I didn't accept it because I hadn't followed the lesson. I redid the speech at another club properly following the guidelines. DTM means distinguished Toastmaster. It doesn't mean don't time me, and it doesn't mean didn't take much. I need to be held accountable to my Toastmasters commitments as much as anybody or more so. DTM isn't something you own. It's not something you do. It's not something hanging on the wall. It's something I have to earn every time I speak or it doesn't mean a thing. I wanna show you the grid that I use when I'm capturing notes during an evaluation. I make a column for positives and a column for negatives. That's the plus and minus. The rows are what I saw, what I heard, and what I felt. I put my comments into the category boxes as I listen to the speech, doing my best to capture the specific wording where possible so I can quote it in my evaluation. If I like something that the person says when I give the evaluation, I want to say, Abby, I love the quote about the kitten. I don't want to say, you had good stuff that you talked in your speech there, right? Okay, now you don't have to give a laundry list of all the things that were done well or need improvement. When evaluating an experienced speaker, look at your notes and pull out the most unique or significant areas. Try to surprise the speaker with your insights rather than fall back on typical Toastmasters tropes. Pick two things the speaker did well, transition to something related to the second point that could have been even better, 
and at most give one more suggestion, then transition back to the thing the speaker did best. So two things they did well, up to two things that are areas for improvement, and then the thing they did best is where you're going to leave the evaluation. Now, if I don't have time to write out the evaluation, I'll just add numbers to my notes that tell me how I should move between my comments. So here I'm going to start with the vocal variety. I enjoyed your voices, grandpa and grandma. Move over to great character faces, your, your gestures, grandpa, mama, cat. But one way that you can improve, step three, is to have your hands uh, drop out of sight rather than keeping them always above your waist and avoid mirror gestures as you're working. But speaking of hands, I was touched by the story of the kitten with the crooked paw, and I thought that was the highlight of your speech. So you can flow seamlessly between the main points and use the uh, connection between a positive with a negative as a transition as you're moving through the evaluation. The evaluation isn't just a report on what you have seen. It's a type of speech and something that you can practice working with, especially if you're going to be in an evaluation contest. You want to be able to present the information true, but that's only 70% uh, of the points. The rest has to do with the way you deliver it and the empathy that you show. Now, if you're going to ever be in a contest, always prepare as if you were in a contest. So that means have a clear introduction and a clear conclusion with smooth transitions between each section. In this case, I might start with the short poem, the fact is that no one likes a cat, but many are smitten by a kitten. The conclusion, uh, after talking about the kitten with the crooked paw, I might be, I appreciated your thoughtful and touching speech, and I'm even more smitten with you as a result. Toastmaster, then you hand it back. So be mindful of your time, Start your summary at yellow, not at red. One of my favorite Toastmasters had excellent feedback in a recent contest, probably lost only by going two or three seconds over time. It's not all right to go over time in a meeting, and it's deadly in a contest. Now, I won't, uh, oh, sorry, that was a note to myself. I'm not going to say it there. So. These are some things the Toastmasters say to Toastmasters when they don't know what to say to Toastmasters. The first one is, you drew me in. That doesn't mean anything. I, I, I don't know what, what you're saying. So if you're saying you intrigued me, if you're saying uh, I was drawn into the story that you were telling, give me the reasons that you found it compelling. and Don't just say something like, you drew me in and leave it uh, at that. Very often people will say, use the stage in Toastmasters. This is obviously more common when people are live and in person. When you say, use the stage, it uh, is just something that you throw out there because everything else was perfect, I guess. No one ever said to Steve Jobs, hey, that was a great commencement speech, but you stood behind the podium the entire time. You should have walked back and forth on the stage. Absolutely not. When I tell stories, I have a tendency to keep my feet in one place and use gestures and my visual descriptions to uh, convey the story. I don't move around on the stage. So you should only give that feedback if you found that the speech actually suffered because the person didn't move. The same is true of Zoom. People always say, oh, you should stand up when you work in Zoom. Well, we give a lot of presentations now in the professional world, and we do it over Zoom very often. It's a long presentation and we sit. I don't know if any of you have been put off by the fact that I'm sitting as I give this workshop this evening, but I think it's fine that I'm in my seat and I shouldn't be criticized for doing that. Be careful about just summarizing the speech you heard. First, you told us about your childhood and adopting a kitten. Then you told us about caring for the cat as a teenager. Then you talked about leaving the cat behind when you went to college. Yes, that is the speech we all just heard. So what? No, don't just recap what you heard. You have to give feedback on the things that worked well. So 
if you've heard it before, make it specific to the speech you heard tonight. It's very important. Most importantly, you must provide honest feedback. It has to be based on your honest reaction to the speech you've just heard. Don't fall into the trap of evaluating the speaker based on other speaker speeches you've seen. The only one that matters is the speech they gave today, not a summation of some illustrious career. It's particularly applicable when the speaker fails to follow or meet the requirements in the Pathways lesson. I once called out a past international director for trying to read a poem when it was clear he hadn't practiced and didn't even understand certain lines. It doesn't matter if you've been a speaker at the Commonwealth Club in the past. I'm evaluating your speech today, and I'll point it out if you miss the mark. Now, I recently discovered the book Radical Candor by Kim Scott. Sometimes you read a book and you're amazed at the new ideas. Wow, I never thought of that before. That wasn't the case for me. I recognized and resonated with the candor compass instantly because I had learned about it from experience. The candor compass has got four arrows. Horizontally, you have a continuum of remaining silent to offering challenging feedback. Vertically, you have a continuum from utter apathy to caring deeply. Some people think that love is the opposite of hate. That's not true. There's a very fine line between love and hate. The opposite of love is not caring, and that can be devastating. See, if you don't care about a speaker and you challenge her directly, that's not radical candor. That's obnoxious aggression. Don't confuse the two. Essentially, if you're brutally honest without having developed a caring relationship, you're being a jerk. So don't use radical candor as an excuse to be a jerk to people. However, if you're not practicing radical candor, it's actually the second best choice to be obnoxious and aggressive because at least you're giving useful feedback. If you don't care and you don't give useful feedback, you'll just say pleasant little nothings. That's insincere manipulation. You might say one thing in your evaluations, but secretly talk smack behind the person's back. That's no way to build trust with the speaker. It's also no way to build trust with the people you talk smack with. They'll assume that you talk smack about them when they're not around. So caring is important, but we also have to challenge the speaker. Otherwise, we'll indulge in the most insidious of the misguided feedback perhaps the most harmful of all, ruinous empathy, sparing their feelings at the expense of growth. I see this in particular with non-native English speakers. We're so busy dancing around issues of pronunciation and grammar that we give false encouragement, say that these speakers are better than they actually are. That can make a person feel confident, full of self-esteem, and end up being a bad speaker. So we have to show the courage to give honest feedback or there can't be any growth. That's where radical candor comes in or Kim Scott has actually changed it since the first publication of her book. She calls it compassionate candor. At its core, it's giving guidance and feedback that is kind and clear, specific and sincere, honest and loving. If you appreciate something the speaker did, well, talk about it specifically and why you found it effective. A good evaluation doesn't have to be critical. It can be positive if you take the time to give examples rather than use empty superlatives. Talk to my friend Solarzar. Here he is right here. He has an excellent presentation about removing the superlatives from our evaluations. Don't you, Solarzar? Nod your head. Yes, you do. And I'm going to watch for that later on. <laughs> Now, when I read Radical Candor, I recognized Compassionate Candor immediately because I'm already using it and have been for over a decade. I encourage every Toastmasters club to adopt Compassionate Candor as your standard. I'll also mention a book that uh, is interesting because it flips everything on its head. Thanks for the feedback. This is a book about how to graciously and uh, usefully accept whatever feedback you receive. One of the many ways that evaluations can go awry is when the evaluator has different intentions than the speaker. 
Speaker might be looking for appreciation, but receive coaching instead. Or a speaker might want suggestions for improvement, but instead is told how great they are. Or receive feedback about what they did wrong without suggestions. In Toastmasters, we want to be sure we give a combination of all three, a pat on the back, a notion of how to improve, and some level setting that gives the speaker incentive to continually improve. Now, there's the story of the boy who is a real optimist, and his parents were trying to shake him up, awaken him to the realities of the world. So one Christmas, they gave him a big bag of horse manure. He started digging through it. And Grandma wrinkles her nose and says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm not sure, but I'll bet you there's a pony in here. So when you receive an evaluation, listen to the feedback. And even if it's questionable, listen to it because there might be a pony that you can learn from. Now, there probably is a pony in the feedback, even if you have to dig really deep. Now, in 2010, I was one of the founding members of the Prep Squad. We're an advanced Toastmasters club where we prepare for contest speeches, speaking opportunities outside of Toastmasters, and workshops like the one I'm doing today. We started as a group of friends who wanted to give each other excellent feedback. We typically have someone deliver a five to seven minute speech, and then we spend an hour giving round robin feedback. We're not polite and we don't wait our turn. We often interrupt each other and disagree strongly. Or if a suggestion sparks another idea, we'll break in and build on one another. This method is far more effective than waiting for everybody to take their turn. We give blunt, fair, and direct criticism. Now, in order to have that give and take, we have to know that we're dealing with someone we trust, someone we love, someone we know is on our side and trying to help us do our best. In order for someone to become a member of that club, they first have to give a speech and receive the feedback. Then they have to listen to a speech at the next meeting and we listen to their feedback. Their member has to be voted in unanimously to join our club. Now to the uninitiated guest, it might seem like we're rude, angry, or upset with each other, but no. We say what needs to be said, we make raucous jokes, stick a pin in each other's egos. Not only can we tolerate it, but it actually makes our bond stronger because we know it comes from a good place. Our club is small, not because we don't want to add members, but because we seldom find candidates who are a good fit. What we'd like to see is more clubs like ours that provide honest and direct criticism in an atmosphere of compassion and severe devotion to one another. If you're interested in starting or forming such a club, feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you get started. All right, I see that we have a couple of questions or comments before we get going. So, Solarzer has a question. Oh, okay. Actually, my question was addressed. Uh, Dennis had skipped superlatives on his slide, but he came back around to it. No, actually, uh, the emphasis on that did come from you, Solarzar, and I, I did split it out into a separate special slide because I think you're so brilliant. Oh, that's it. That is the last compliment I'm going to give you until I have to give you another. For the, yeah, for the next two years. I, I understand. I'm good with that. So we're clear. All right. Any other immediate questions? No. All right. And there should be some time for questions at the end. But right now, what I would like to do is stop showing my slides. There we are. As promised, we have a target speaker. We are going to allow him to speak for five to seven minutes. Then we will have three evaluators give three evaluations in a row. We are not going to kick anybody out of the room. So evaluators, you just go ahead and prepare. And we will have Anita and then Sharon and then Solarzar give their evaluations. So that will be the evaluation order. You'll give all three of them. And then I'll give feedback on the evaluations. So, um, go ahead, Abby. You want to interrupt me? Yeah, there is a question in the chat. Oh. From Sam. Sam, come on, Cam, uh, come on, Mike, and ask your question. Yes, Dennis. Hi, uh, this is Sam here. I have a question. Is it important for the evaluator 
to know the topic of the speech beforehand uh, or, or is that's unnecessary? I think it's important that the evaluator know which pathways lesson the person will be working on and know the title of the speech. As far as having any inside knowledge about what is about to be said in the speech, I would say no. In fact, that would be a negative thing, that uh, all of the information should uh, be there in the speech, and you should be evaluating the speech that you hear. If you got a lot of background information, it would actually uh, change your uh, point of view about the speech because you'd be listening to it with special knowledge. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And everything I say here is my own personal opinion. Uh, you can take that with a grain of salt, my opinions. And uh, I guess $6.75 will get you a small latte at Starbucks. So there we go. All right, Avi, would you like to introduce our test speaker for this evening? Yes, I will do that. Our test speaker today is Rishikesh Gokhale. He's speaking from Motivational Strategies Pathway. And the project he's working on is Know Your Sense of Humor. The purpose of this project is to begin developing a collection of humorous stories and to present a speech that includes humor. Rishikesh Gokhale, I am, am I on mute? Am I on mute? Rishikesh Gokhale. Am I on mute, Abhijit? Corporate rules have been changed. COVID has put us in an unusual situation. And we are now forced to work from our home and attend daily meetings daily. I am thankful for this technology. We are able to meet the distant relatives with a just click of mouse. But when it was difficult to meet them physically. Don't take me wrong. I am thankful for this technology. But being an introvert, this daily occurrence of meeting give me a sense of dread. Whenever I wake up, it gave me a feeling that, oh my God, I have to wake up, start my laptop, log in again, and join an online meeting where 10 people are talking one by one. Better, I should go on mute. Calm down, calm down, sir. This issue is reported by Chetna. We will do the root cause analysis of defect and come back to you. I was murmuring in the sleep. My wife woke me up and told, Rushi, first you need to fix your sleep issues, then need to fix your defect in your work. I realized that I was talking in the sleep and these online meetings have disturbed my sleeping as well. I miss tucking my shirt and going to the office. One day, my mom saw all the shirts that, have, that I have placed in the store. She realized that maybe I have purchased a new set of shirts for my uncle. I had a difficult time convincing her that these are not the new set of shirts, but my old shirts that I have purchased a long back. I also miss kicking my bike and going to the office. One day, a scrap picker came to my home and asked me, Sir, do you want to sell this bike? I am glad to give you a 2000 bucks. I answered him, No, bro. I purchased this bike a year ago and I am not going to sell it. He told me, Sir, look at the situation of your bike. Take this 3000 bucks and get a good repairing of your bike. I realized that my bike is in a very bad condition. In all during condition, in all our present circumstances, our 
liking or status is determined by how many meetings we are attending day by day. Similarly, to the our online social media, where how much subscriber we have, whether on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. Last week, our salary got credited, and my manager decided to have some progress report discussion with me. While sharing his screen, accidentally, I got a chance to look at his salary slip. His salary slip is as fat as him. This has motivated me to slog more, work hard, so that one day I will ha have a same salary as him. Nowadays, my son also understanding the various statuses of the online meeting. I asked him, where is your mom? He told me, mom was away 15 minutes back. I don't know whether it was intentional or a real one. By the way, my next cartoon is about to start in next 10 minutes. Do not disturb me. Otherwise, I will have to block you. We have random guests in our Toastmasters meeting. Similarly, we have random guests in our corporate meetings as well. One day in our online meeting, I saw one of the daughter of my coworker started combing the curly hair of her mom. And one day, a son was feeding his hungry father during the meeting. One day, I forgot to keep myself mute on the meeting. In the meeting, my wife shouted from the behind, "Rushi, you have to make a cauliflower cauliflower dish today for today's dinner." My plan as a cook for today's dinner was revealed to all my coworkers. Oops, it has been revealed in this Toastmasters meeting as well. Dear Toastmasters, before a timer show me a red card, it's better I should go on mute. I request the event coordinator and fellow Toastmasters to get rid of these online meetings and move to the physical meetings as soon as possible. Back to you, Dennis. Thank you. All right, based on the notes you were able to capture during that uh, speech, normally we would give you five minutes to prepare, but I'm going to give you one minute to tidy everything up. I have to commend you, Rishkesh, the most intimidating thing in Toastmasters is to do a humorous assignment because before you speak, the person introducing you says, well, Harish Kesh is going to give us a humorous speech and it's going to be funny and you're going to laugh your head off as he starts, as he moves through and as he finishes. And it sets you up for this high bar of humor and then you have to live up to that. Uh, every other Toastmaster speech tells you that you have to use good vocal variety or something along that. But it's, it's a particularly tough lesson when you have to be funny. And so I commend you, commend you, my friend, for stepping up to that uh, high bar here with this particular exercise. And now that I've talked through that, I'm going to ask Anita if you would please give your feedback or reach Kesson speech. Thank you, Dennis. So I overall really loved the speech because it was humorous and a topic which everyone can relate to. Like which of which one of us hasn't been on a, a Zoom meeting or haven't had something happen when we were not on mute, right? So I would say the stories were pretty well framed and uh, very, very relatable and also about working hard and getting a fatter paycheck. And some of the things I would say would make it even more effective was if between the stories, there was a little bit of like slow down so that we had time to digest those stories before we moved on to the next one. And also like after you, uh, you mentioned the calm down which your colleague Chetna I think had said, then 
if there was a pause after that, that would make it pretty much more effective for us. And also a little bit more vocal variety would help uh, make it more funnier, especially exaggerating some of those things, like what Chetna said or what your wife said. And I would say sharing the personal stories made it more impactful for us because then everyone can relate to it more, especially the one with the wife saying something from the behind when you were not on mute. And um, I would say one uh, comment I had even about the background because you had a blue shirt on and a blue background. So that blended in too much. So I would say if having a different color background, then the shirt would help a little bit more. And I will and I would say transitions uh, can um, can be worked on a little bit. So that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. All right, we'll move on to Sharon who's all set. She's Johnny on the spot. She is unmuted and ready to go. Thank you so much. I thank you so much, Rashid, for having the courage to speak, period. I mean, you're in an evaluation seminar <laughs> and I would be afraid because we're all here to evaluate you. So I appreciate that courage. Your body language to me was very effective. I felt your inner soul. I liked your goal about getting back to meeting in person. I can see that that's important to you. I have to confess, <laughs> sorry, I have trouble understanding um, different dialects. I don't know if it's just me or, I mean, it's just difficult for me. So I had some trouble and I lost a lot of the meaning of what you were saying. I was really intent on listening and I wanted to grasp the story because I knew you were very much involved with it. Unfortunately, the different dialect challenges my brain. And so I, I'm sure I lost some meaning that I should have had, unfortunately, and I apologize for that. I'm learning, I'm getting better the more I'm in Toastmasters. It hasn't been that long, but I know there are a lot of, um, foreign members of Toastmasters, and I need to develop a better ear for listening. The one thing I noticed I think you could improve on is the camera angle. I used to do some modeling, and I know one of the worst camera angles is from below and up. And I would recommend that your camera or you sit up higher so that the camera forces you to be more straight on or even above. It's much more flattering and it can affect your, your speaking uh, impression. So what else do I have to say? I just, you know, I really appreciate what you did. I'm, I'm, I would be scared to do what you did. So I applaud you and thank you so very, very much, Rashid. Wonderful. And now we will go to Solar Czar, who is going to sweep up for us. Am, am I on mute? Am I on mute? Oh, okay. <laughs> Rishikesh, as everyone has said, thank you for doing this. There were two challenges today. One is, of course, you are presenting this to an evaluation workshop. Second was, as Dennis mentioned, you were incorporating a humor to bring humor into the presentation. So I want to applaud you for both of those efforts and for the time you took to put this together. Now, a couple of things, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of things I noticed. You started out with your gestures being very parallel when you began speaking. And we were going kind of up and down and up and down. And then you draft one off and we'd kind of go up and down again. So always try to think of your gestures as an enhancement to your speech. Obviously, you speak with your hands. I don't know. You must have some Italian blood. <laughs> but, but clearly, there's some of that in there because this was very natural for you. When you started, the other thing I would really recommend for you is take a breath before you start. I know you wanted to get that am I on mute out there, but 
because what happened is you started to speak and then you kind of closed your eyes a little bit. And I said, oh, that's, that's kind of that initial nervousness because you were really, I really was disappointed in one area because it was, am I on mute? I really thought we were going to spend the time on that. So when you got into the story of the bike and the story of the shirts, I felt like we were leaving the main point with, but, but you kind of brought it together at the end, but you brought it back again to this idea of not being in an online meeting. So I would try to be as coherent as possible with whatever your title is. Your title doesn't have to tell us what the speech is, but when you got into the shirt and the bike, I was trying to figure out what does mute have to do with that? And why does the online meeting and the dread you experienced have to do with that? So I wanted to hear that. I have to admit from the humor perspective, I really only picked out a couple of things, a salary as fat as him, and then oops, I already told you what I'm also making for dinner, for the cauliflower dinner. So I may have missed some of the other elements of humor you tried to bring in. And going back to something that Anita shared, what I saw was a pattern of speaking. The pattern of speaking was, when I wake up, it gives a feeling of dread. And you kind of maintain that pattern of speaking for a lot of it. So even when Anita was referring to both pauses or vocal variety, it kind of creates this sameness because I don't want to say, because Dennis said not to, that you drew me in. I can't say that. But I also have to tell you, Risha Cash, I actually don't love you. I mean, I just, okay. but I really appreciate you doing this presentation this evening and having the courage to step up in both areas and present that to us this evening. Humor is a challenge. I agree with it. And I'm glad that you took the risk because you're really on your way. Thank you. Wonderful. I really appreciate the insights I saw from each of the evaluators tonight. And that's why it's just so helpful to always have good evaluations from everybody in the club. Because speech to speech, if you have different evaluators, they're going to see different things and give you these nuanced uh, pieces of feedback. You put them all together, and that's how you improve your speaking abilities. So I appreciated, Anita, you talked about the, the pace and pausing, which is definitely an area for improvement here. One thing I'll caution you on, you said that the personal stories were more impactful for us. Right now, who is us? Oh, okay, that's all right. I won't make you actually answer. When we give feedback, it is always what I saw, what I heard, and what I felt. So be very careful not to speak for everybody in the room because they might not agree with you. And then they're going to stop listening to your evaluation as they think, well, Anita, who does she think she is? She's saying that I thought this and I didn't think that at all. Yes, yes. And thought, you see, the whole thing about an evaluation is that uh, it's something that gives feedback and it's helpful to the speaker. And that's great. But it's also a growth opportunity for the evaluator because you have to put together this evaluation speech and deliver it. And it's an educational opportunity for everyone who heard the speech and saw the evaluation because they're going to listen to your thoughts and compare them with their own and say, well, I actually would have said blah, blah, blah. I would have noticed blah, blah, blah. And so everybody in the room is doing an evaluation, at least in their own head. And that helps everybody in the room grow. Uh, let's see. Uh, I appreciated, uh, Sharon, when you said that you... Uh, uh, appreciated uh, Rishkesh's uh, courage to speak. That's uh, nice to uh, identify that. You had trouble understanding some of the things he said, and you expressed that as, I need a better ear. And that is an excellent place to come from in, in Toastmasters. It's not Rishkesh's fault that he speaks the way he does. However, Rishkesh, if you want to be able to reach a broader audience, then you can listen to the feedback you get. Now, I appreciate Rishkesh, the way you, you did speak in a measured uh, tone. You've probably been told in the past that you speak too quickly and you've been trying to adjust for that. Is that true? Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. And so uh, kudos to you for that. Uh, excellent, uh, Sharon, 
uh, it's great that you drew on your past experience in modeling to say that the camera angle wasn't flattering to the speaker. And it, this is, again, Toastmasters does not bring in toddlers. We bring in people with a vast array of life experiences. And this is why you should never feel like, oh, geez, am I qualified to give feedback to this speaker, this advanced speaker, this person who's been in Toastmasters for 20 years? Yes, if you bring your own uh, experience from life, into your evaluations with your own unique perspective, you're going to give people things that they totally didn't expect. So uh, nicely done, as far as that goes. So Lazar, you pointed out a couple of things that I also captured in, in Rishkesh's speech, and these are important. What, what you call parallel gestures, I call them marionette gestures or mirror gestures. It's when both hands move together like this. And if you go back and watch the recording, you're, you're going to see that very often you do use both hands. You might want to practice dropping one hand or the other as you're doing. Uh, not many people pick up on the melody of the sentence, so there's are, and this is what I, I uh, would point to is that the melody of your speech from line to line had a tendency to be the same. And what that creates is a hypnotic effect on, on the audience. They may uh, drift off, uh, they may start thinking about other things, they may fall asleep as you're going. So being aware of the melody of your speech as you're going along and changing the, the melody, going up and down the uh, scale and almost singing the speech, you can practice it that way uh, as a way to in, include more vocal uh, variety as you go. Uh, and Solarzar, you were disappointed when he left the main point. I was disappointed when you went off the point of the speech. Using that I language is great. I wanted to hear more. I may have missed the jokes. So you see, yeah, that's not saying you did anything wrong, Rishkesh. It's saying that Solarzar is kind of stupid and he wasn't, no, no, that he, he's pu putting it on himself that he wasn't able to follow, hear, and catch the jokes. And that is the best way to give feedback rather than attacking the person or saying, you need to do this because you probably don't need to do what I would tell you in your speech, but I can tell you how I reacted to it and you can make adjustments uh, as a result. So really uh, between the three of them, what a great set of evaluations you got. You got a little bit of different flavor from each of the participants and that's going to bring you around to a great uh, learning experience. What's wonderful about round robin evaluations, as you just saw, is that instead of getting a small amount of feedback from great people over a great deal of time, if you have a club where people are able to all give this uh, verbal feedback, it's educational for the speaker, of course, and it's educational for everybody in the room. If you do it, though, don't be uh, afraid to disagree with the other people who are uh, giving their feelings. Very, very often somebody will say something that is uh, really just completely off the wall. You, you would have been much better if you'd talked in a higher voice. Have you ever tried talking like this? That's a great way to give a speech. Well, you don't want to let something like that <laughs> go and not challenge it. So you should have a club where people are willing to uh, express themselves, but you should also be willing to challenge bad advice because very often we get that from the Toastmasters tropes. When somebody gets up there and says, use the stage, I might raise my hand and say, you know, I thought it was just fine what, that he was standing there. How would you have moved around the stage in a way that would enhance this particular speech and have a discussion rather than just allowing people to throw out uh, crazy ideas and expect other people to listen to them. But once again, Remember that big bag of manure, before you reject everything they say, dig down and see if there's a pony, because it might just be there. All right, we have a couple more minutes. If there are any other questions before we go? It, uh, oh, oh, there goes Solarzar. He, he actually wants to ask a question that shows how much he knows. Go, go, Solarzar. Okay. 
Well, first, I want to point out to everybody that Dennis doesn't love me either. So I think that that's kind of equal. But, but yeah, I think the big bag of manure analogy is good for all of us. I think that that's really a, a wonderful thought for all of us to keep in mind that evaluation is feedback. We know somebody received it that way. And then we have to dig for what, what applies to us. I think that's a great analogy. I just wanted to emphasize that, Dennis. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. The idea is to listen to what a lot of people say and take what sticks. Some of it is going to be immediately obvious. That is exactly what I should be doing. Sometimes it is going to be you know, three o'clock in the morning, two days later, you sit up in bed and you say, oh, my God, uh, Avi was actually right. And then you never tell him so, but you incorporate that feedback. Some of the stuff, it's just plain garbage and you let it wash right off of you. There's no reason to take bad advice. Mm -hmm. Puva. Uh, yeah, I just had a comment. Is it a good idea to usually like list out uh, the comments, uh, positive, like uh, what you liked about the speech and then separate out the, the um, recommendations separately? Like sometimes I think I have a hard time when people like bring it all in where one one is positive or one is uh you know advice versus positive and i i get all confused like i have to listen in to say okay which one do i need to actually improve on so would that be a good um way to do it like just to separate out the you know the positives first and then uh the recommendations okay i i don't recommend that style myself all right okay. I know that many people do that. They have the three positives and the three negatives. Mm -hmm. But that means you're always going to finish the evaluation on a negative note. I see. Mm -hmm. so that's why I say save the best thing they did and, and put it in there. And remember, you're not going to try and uh, turn them into a perfect speaker with your mm -hmm. one evaluation. No. There's going to be plenty mm -hmm. of time to give uh, feedback over time. So it's best to choose one at most two areas for improvement that you're going to emphasize in this mm -hmm. particular speech and know that there will be time to talk about the other things. Uh, I had another point about that. That's no, oh, okay. No, I think that I covered it. Did, did I cover it for you? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. I, I like your idea about ending it positively, uh, kind of coming back to the positives again. Yes. That is certainly not my invention. It's called the sandwich <laughs> method. And uh, it, I think there's still a book available, Effective Evaluations, on the Toastmasters website that you can look to, and you'll see uh, various types described there. Uh, the important thing is that you do give uh, feedback about the areas for improvement, because that's the most important thing that you're going to take out of an evaluation. Now, Stephen. Yes, thanks very much for this. It's been really helpful for me. So. I'm very new to Toastmasters, um, and I don't at all, I don't have a speaking background, you know, before that. So I feel like, how much do I really have to offer in the sense of feedback if I were to be general evaluator for the day in my Toastmasters club? Uh, ought I wait until I've done some more speaking and feel like I have more to offer as far as positive, uh, you know, uh, I guess, feedback, or I guess, I forget how, how we framed it here. The the more the constructive criticisms. I wonder. I wonder what uh, I found that when I'm listening to, or or when I'm listening to a speech, and then before the general evaluator, who someone else right speaks, uh, that I have a hard time thinking. What would I say to give some constructive feedback to this person? Um, uh, and I have a hard time thinking of anything. So I'm wondering if if yeah, if this is just more of a I should wait until I've uh, develop my own speaking skills a bit more before I even step into that role or what advice you'd have. Back in the old days when I joined Toastmasters and dinosaurs roamed the earth, we had manuals and the uh, guidance was you should give three speeches before you ever do an evaluation. When they wrote the Pathways program, they set it up so that you would give your icebreaker, then you give two speeches for which you receive evaluations. The idea is that you need to get the the feeling what it feels like to receive evaluations and three of them is, is a good number and then you have to give an evaluation 
to, to get past that lesson. So the, that's the way Toastmasters has it set up. Three speeches, then you give your first evaluation, which is great. Now, you may be saying, wow, I don't have any experience in Toastmasters. How could I possibly give useful feedback? Let me tell you, Solar Czar, I'll bet you'll back me up. The best feedback I ever get is from new members coming in because everyone else, perhaps they respect me for my longevity in Toastmasters and they don't want to offend me by telling me I'm doing something stupid. And then a new person comes in and says, why do you continually pull your beard while you're speaking? I find it really distracting. Uh, oh, am I pulling my beard? And everybody in the room says, well, Dennis, you, know, you do pull your beard the whole time you talk. And nobody had the temerity to tell me I'm doing something silly, right? So the best feedback you get is from new members coming in. And if what happens is after people have been in the club for a while, they kind of go with the flow. They get used to the kinds of things that people uh, evaluate on. Some clubs get so sunk into a particular pattern that nobody ever learns anything in those clubs because all of the evaluations are the same and all of them are pretty much useless. So you can be the firebrand in your club. And I'm saying this to everybody here, honestly tell people what you saw, what you heard, what you felt, what you thought was great with specific examples, what you thought could be better with specific examples. And uh, you're going to be amazed at the reaction you get from people in your clubs as they start receiving real feedback. That whitewash feedback over time will turn anybody into a confident uh, person full of self-esteem who is a very bad speaker. And that's what we certainly want to avoid. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? So yes, our, go ahead. got an answer. Uh, you're muted. May, may I share a question or observation, Dennis, or something? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, oh okay. A, a couple of things for Stephen and everybody is that, first place, I, I would get rid of the word criticism, Stephen, when you say, we're not here to criticize each other. We're really not, we're not. We're, we're here to help each other provide feedback. The other thing is, like Dennis said, we're not experts. You're strictly, how did it, as Dennis said, how did it affect you? And then the third thing that I could encourage as an idea is make notes when people are speaking and just say, what of the things that you made notes on did the evaluator touch on? Would you have touched on something else? Or did the evaluator say something that you didn't catch? You know, don't, don't let the speech be idle to you. Say, let me make a note of, I like this, I didn't like this or, you know, I would recommend this differently. Just practice that. Those are my, those are my comments, Dennis. And if you want to add anything to that. Or... Uh, no, I think you summed it up really well. I know we're over time. Yeah. Oh, I should drop my email address into chat for everybody. If you have questions in the future and you can't get a hold of Solarzar, it's tmdennisdawson at gmail.com. And always feel free to ask me anything about Toastmasters. I obviously have no life. <laughs> and I'm always up to talk about Toastmasters. So feel free to send me uh, information. Uh, can you have the slides? Uh, yeah, send me an email and I will uh, give you access to the slides. And, and Dennis, I'm assuming those are your drawings that you did yourself because those are wonderful. Wonderful. I love your drawings on your slides. Those are my own drawings, yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And to clarify, I don't love anybody anyway. So I just can't get that far. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you for taking the time to give us this workshop. And Great job, Dennis. Thank you. Better every time. Better every time. Yeah. Thank you, Rishikesh, for being our test speaker today. We really appreciate you. And our wonderful evaluators. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you, Solarza. We so appreciate you. We learned something from all three of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Abhijit. Thank you, Dennis, Solarza, and everyone else. And Sharon. Yeah.
Wish and you all. Case, I loved, <laughs> loved all the examples. Wish you all a happy holidays. <laughs>